Joining us is Dr. Tim O'Connell, Associate Professor of Natural Resource Ecology and Management. Well, Tim, in Oklahoma, we're really fortunate to get to enjoy millions of birds mm -hmm. passing through this time of year on their migration south. Yeah. As gardeners, I'm sure there's something we can do to help them along the way and even welcome them. Yeah, I think for the migrants passing through, one of the things to understand is that they typically move through at night. And mm -hmm. sometimes you can even hear little squeaks, these little contact calls they make when they're flying overhead. But in the daytime, they need to find shelter. They need to find some place to land and rest, for one, where they can be out of, uh, out of the way of predators, mm -hmm. and they can find food and cover and water. So landowners, if they can provide cover, food, and water, those are three great things, three great ways that they can help these migratory birds make their long journey. Excellent. Now, a lot of people who already enjoy gardening for birds are going to have uh, water in their landscape, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's a bird bath or, or a larger feature. Yeah, that's a great thing to do. Mm -hmm. But with plants, we want, prob there's probably some pretty specific plants or certain things we're looking for. Yeah, a lot of these birds that are migrating through, little warblers, vireos, these are insect-eating birds. Uh, so they've just spent the entire spring and summer eating insects, feeding insects to their babies. But their diets switch when they get ready for migration. And they switch from a mostly insect-based diet to a largely fruit-based diet. The fruits are important because they provide carbohydrates that the birds can then convert to fat. And they need to pack on a lot of fat so they can make really long uh, journey flights. For example, crossing the Gulf of Mexico. Right. You only get one shot to do that. You've <laughs> got to get it right. Uh, so if landowners can provide abundant fruits available at this time of year, that's a great thing for migrants moving through. Since we're talking about native birds, we probably want to use native plants as yeah, well. Yeah, I would always recommend natives. Mm -hmm. Well, this area we designed to support um, wildlife, particularly birds, and so I have a lot of these plants here. And this is a Carolina buckthorn. Mm -hmm, beautiful. Um, you can see the fruits coming on right now, and I'm sure they'll uh, ripen as the birds come through. Yeah, the fruits are bright and attractive. They're abundant on this tree and there's also a lot of cover mm -hmm. on the tree. So that's a great thing for a uh, great thing for to draw in migrants into your your backyard. Now in our woodland area, mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of native viburnums uh, throughout the state. Um, this one's the rusty black haw and it's uh, not completely mature, but you can see some of the fruits are starting to ripen on here as well. Oh yeah, that's great. So um, people think of fall migration. They think it's something that happens once the, once the weather turns cool. You know, fall migration is something that happens in September or October or November, but it really starts much earlier than that. By midsummer, birds are migrating. So fruits available from midsummer through, say, early December would benefit different waves of migrants moving through. And it'll be good to have plants that mature at different that times. That mature at different so times, yeah, and have those fruits be, be available. Yeah. In the woods here, we also have uh, beautyberry with those beautiful purple fruits on oh, it. Oh yeah, it looks great. And this is a, a native that is found mostly in the woodland. This is strawberry euonymus, and mm -hmm. the fruits are not quite mature yet when they open up with those beautiful red uh, fruits inside. Um, certainly, we have a lot of songbirds that are in the open areas in the sunny locations. But I imagine the woodland also supports a lot of migrating birds. It sure does. Uh, mostly it's right along woodland edges where you'll have most of the birds moving through. Um, but a, a tree like this, that's, that's providing a, a wonderful food source for birds. Okay. I'm sure there's a few vines as well. Why don't we go take a look at some that's of those? That's a great idea. Well, one of the vines we have in the garden is this American bittersweet. It's not a very common plant, mm -hmm. um, but it is a native. and. Mm -hmm has pretty flowers in the spring and then of course the nice orange fruits this time of year. Mm -hmm. That would help me fatten up for migration for sure. <laughs> On the other side we have a honeysuckle and of course there's native and exotic but we want to focus on those native ones. Yeah that's what I would recommend. And this time of year my plants have fruits and flowers mm -hmm. so I imagine we're getting a benefit for both uh, migratory birds feeding on the fruit, but also hummingbirds. That's right. I consider sort of August and September to be hummingbird season. Mm -hmm. That's when they're migrating through. Ruby-throated hummingbird is our common hummingbird, and it ranges across most of North America. So there are millions of them streaming through right now on their way to Mexico and Central America to spend the winter. Mm -hmm. So they need food, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people will put hummingbird food out in little hummingbird feeders, right. and that's a great way to attract them. But having plants available for them that they'll feed from is, is even better for a couple of reasons. One, they've got a, a different balance of nutrients that they might be getting from the nectar in the wild plants. But also, hummingbirds eat a good bit of insect food too. And they can, you'll often see them sort of picking little spiders and other little insects uh, off um, some vegetation. Okay. So they do eat a, a good bit of invertebrate food in addition to just drinking nectar. 
one of the best plants, I think, for hummingbirds is trumpet vine or trumpet creeper. They really are attracted to those long, orange, tubular flowers. And they're really spectacular and it's for a the great landscape plant. Sure. as well. Yeah, yeah. Now, there's a few plants that we commonly find, um, just natives that come up, and maybe if we promote those rather than pull them out, uh, we can attract a few more birds to the landscape. Sure, one of my favorite ones is pokeweed or pokeberry. And this is probably the bane to a lot of gardeners because it, it's sort of weedy and it comes up on its own and can really take over if you let it. Well, in my yard, I've let it mm -hmm. because uh, that's what I want to do more than anything else. I'm not trying to manage a putting green in my backyard. What I want to do is make habitat for native birds. And uh, those bright black, shiny blackberries on pokeweed are really attractive both to migrants and resident birds. Mm -hmm. And they just gobble them up like crazy in my backyard. I think they're beautiful as well. I kind of so like them, sure. To each his own, right? Yeah. <laughs> a few of our shrubs that we find just growing uh, along woody edges or along roadsides. Mm -hmm. um, we have the, the roost species, the sumacs. Yeah, sumacs are great. Mm -hmm. uh, another one of dogwoods, rough leaf dogwood is the one with the uh, white berries mm -hmm. or the white fruits. And uh, that's fruiting in abundance right now. So between the dogwood and the pokeberry, those are two great plants that fruit at the right time which is right now, sort of late summer, early fall. And that's when so many birds are, are really trying to fatten up and get ready for migration. So timing is everything for these migrants. And as gardeners, we can make sure to help those birds by getting the right plants out there that'll be ready when they come through. So having a mix of fruiting shrubs and, and other plants available for birds from say midsummer through early December is a great way to manage your yard to be attractive to migrating birds. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, it's great today. to be here.